Howdy everybody, welcome back to Accounting 1101 where we have come to the end of an accounting period and we need to close out our accounting records. Friends, in our video right now I'm going to show you exactly how to make those closing entries to get everything closed out and ready for the next accounting period. Now, if we think back to the videos, where we've been, where we're at, we are working through the accounting cycle. Right, that big long accounting cycle, nine, ten step procedure. We've looked at transactions, recorded them, posted them, made trial balances. We've made adjusting entries and then we made another trial balance called the adjusted trial balance. We've made financial statements and now we are here at the end of the accounting cycle talking about making all the closing entries. We've talked about how it's kind of like the end of a, a ball game. We got the scoreboard, it shows our final score, who won, who lost, no different than a month or a quarter or a year in business where we're keeping track of revenues and expenses, trying to figure out if we made a profit. And so at the end of that accounting period, we got to reset our scoreboard back to zero. We reset it back to zero, but some information, data, statistics, we carry forward, don't we? We learned about the difference between temporary accounts and permanent accounts in our last video, we learned that the income statement, yeah, it's a scoreboard, that is going to be our temporary account. We're gonna reset that scoreboard back to zero. We learned about how on the balance sheet, those accounts are permanent. We don't reset them back to zero. The part we haven't really talked about yet, the closing entries themselves. We haven't really shown you how to make them what accounts are going to be debited, credited, that kind of thing. So here we go. Hopefully you're ready. Closing entry time. There are four closing entries that we need to make. And we make them at the end of every accounting period. We got to close out the revenue account or accounts if we have more than one revenue account. We got to close out the expense account. Then we close out an account called Income Summary. And then finally, if we have dividends going on, we close out that dividend account. So, you need to know how to make four closing entries. But let's talk about that Income Summary. You may look at that and be like, what in the world is Income Summary? It's simply a temporary account that we only use at closing time to help us get revenue and expenses into retained earnings. So, imagine if we have buckets, all right? You can see right here, we've got a revenue bucket, got an expense bucket, and then we have income summary and retained earnings. I actually bought a bucket the other day. I needed a bucket. And I went to Lowe's and I bought a bucket. I didn't buy anything else, y'all. I just bought a blue Lowe's bucket and I came home. The very next day, Lowe's sent me an email asking me to review the bucket. I don't know how you review a bucket. It has a hole in the top. It didn't have holes in the bottom. Five out of five, great job. Our revenue bucket. Imagine we put all our revenue transactions that occurred in that revenue bucket. We put all our expense transactions that occurred in the expenses bucket, right? So what's going to happen at the end of the period, we're going to take that revenue bucket and that expense bucket, and we're going to dump them into income summary. So there we go. So now income summary holds all the revenue and all the expense transactions. If we have more revenue than expenses, we have net income. If it's the opposite, we have a net loss. We're going to take that net income or net loss and then dump it into retained earnings. So that income summary exists just to hold the revenue and expense transactions at the end of the period, and then it just gets dumped right into retained earnings, and it eventually just goes right back to zero. Income summary doesn't appear on the balance sheet. It doesn't appear on the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, uh, statement of shareholders, it doesn't appear anywhere. It's just a little account that we use at the end of the period just to dump stuff in and dump it right back out into retained earnings. Make sense? So. Income summary. First of all, closing entry number one. 
we got to close our revenue account. So if you can take a look at the trial balance here, you can see on our adjusted trial balance, we have two. We have interest revenue. We have a service revenue account. Got to close them out. We got to get those down to zero. All right. So here we go. Let's go ahead and close them out. I'll show you that entry. I've copied the adjusted trial balance amount right here so you can see them. Right now, they have credit balances, don't they? You can see we've got a $140 credit balance in interest revenue. We have a $10,100 credit balance in service revenue. Our goal is to get both of them to zero, nil, nada. And so to do that, we've got to do the opposite from an accounting standpoint. So the opposite of a credit is a debit. Interest revenue, 140. We gotta close out the other one. Service revenue. Ten thousand one hundred. So when we close them, we're doing the opposite. We got to have a credit, don't we? Debits have to equal credits. What are we closing these into? We're going to close them into income summary. So what's the amount of the credit? Well, the amount of the credit is whatever it takes to balance out the entry. We've got 140 and 10,100 on the debit side. Add them up, 10,240. We call that in fancy accounting terms, what I just did right there, we call that a plug. I plugged in a number to make the entry balance, right? I couldn't get that number unless I added up the debit side. I just plug in the total to make the entry balance. So we have closed out revenue accounts to income summary. Let's take a look at it from a T account standpoint. We had 10,100 in revenue. We had 140 in interest revenue. And we dumped them both into income summary. So now, our ending balance in revenue, service revenue is a dollar, interest revenue, I'm sorry, zero dollars, I should say. I'm thinking price is right, I'm bidding a dollar here. Service revenue is a zero amount, interest revenue is a zero amount. We've dumped them into income summary. You can see now we have a $10,240 balance in income summary that represents all the revenue transactions that happened during that period, right? Closing our expense accounts. The exact same idea. We identify the expense accounts. We got to get them all to zero. Got to close them out. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Once again, I've copied the info from the adjusted trial balance over. You can see I've got all my expenses. They are all debit balances as expenses will be. Expenses have a normal debit balance. So we need to put credits in to knock all those in. I'm gonna skip that first line for my debit and then we'll simply list them out. Supplies expense. Got our Depreciation expense. I'm kind of abbreviating here because I have terrible handwriting. I can't fit the whole word in. So hopefully y'all can follow my abbreviations here. And utility expense. We'll throw the amounts in. 175, 5100, and 300. Again, all of those will be credited because I have to do the opposite to close out the account and get it to zero. Once again, I'm going to plug the total to income summary. I'm closing all those accounts out to income summary. 
the amount that I'm going to put in here is going to be a plug. It's going to be a sum of all the other amount. Then we'll try to wildcat it. I mean, don't need to calculate it here. 5,103 would be 5,400. Another 100 would be 5,500 plus 75. We're looking at 5,575. All right, plug a -roo. We plugged it, made the entry balance. Added up the credit side, plug the total into the debit side. Debits equal credits, as always. So again, let's take a look at what we got going on from a T account standpoint. There we are. We have our beginning adjusted balances here in supplies, salaries, depreciation, and utilities. And all I did is I went through, made the closing entries, zeroed out every one of those accounts, the offsetting debit going into the income summary account. So now if you look at where we're at, we have on the debit side of income summary, 5575. That represents all the expenses. On the credit side, we have 10,240. That represents all the revenue. So our ending balance when we net those two together and the income summary account is going to be 4,665. It's on the credit side that represents our net income. If the balance would have been on the debit side, we had more debits than credits, it would have been a net loss. And so that's an important point when we're looking at that income summary account. If we have net income, the number will be on the credit side. We'll have more revenue than expenses. If it's on the debit side, more expenses than revenues. We've lost money. So that's entry number one and two. Close out revenue, close out expenses. Where do we go? Number three, we have to close out that ending balance in income summary. We can't leave it in there. Income summary is a ghost account. It shows up and haunts the accounting records one day a month and then disappears again, okay? And so we got to get rid of that. We get rid of it by closing whatever the balance is, regardless of what side it's on, to our retained earnings account. That's entry number three. So here we have it. We have 46.65 in income summary. We've got to close it out. It's on the credit side. We need to debit it. You got to do the opposite. 46.65. And again, we're going to close that out to retained earnings. Retained earnings goes up on the credit side. Hold on to that thought. There we go. Retained earnings goes up on the credit side. So if you think about it, we had net income, didn't we? We made a profit. Net income profits increase our retained earnings, don't they? This is how they increase our retained earnings. When we close out income summary, we debit it, and then we credit retained earnings. Makes retained earnings go up. If we had lost money, it would be the opposite. We would have debited retained earnings, which would have made retained earnings go down. And so that's kind of how when we say revenues make retained earnings goes up in the long run, when we do the closing process, that's what we're talking about. Revenues make retained earnings go up. Expenses make retained earnings go down. One more closing entry. We got to close that dividend account. We had $100 in the dividend account where we'd paid out, declared dividends, and then paid them. It's got to get rid of that 100 The way we do it, well, just the opposite. Got to credit the dividend account. And there we go. Our debit is going to be to retained earnings. Now, you might say, well, hold up. Why aren't we debiting income summary? Income summary is just for revenue and expense transactions. We dump those in there and close them out. Dividends aren't really expenses. 
All right. I mean, the company could decide not to pay a dividend if they wanted to. You don't have to pay dividends. That's just giving money back to the shareholders. They could decide not to do that. You can't really decide not to have expenses. You know, you got to pay the utility bill. You got to pay your employees. You got to pay uh, for those kind of things. And so we can't really choose not to have expenses, but we can choose not to have dividends, can't we? Company just say, I'm not paying a dividend this year. So dividend transaction with the owners, it's basically closed out to retained earnings. You'll notice the debit to retained earnings makes that account go down. All right, four closing entries. I got them all written out right here, nice and neat in case you can't read my ridiculous handwriting. There is our entry to close out the revenue accounts, our entry to close out the expense accounts. Again, entry number one, entry number two. Entry number three is we close out the income summary account, like you see right there. Entry number four, we close out dividends. I'm gonna put an asterisk, we may not have dividends. We don't, yeah, man, that is not a good asterisk. How about that? Let's just set that right. Boom, that's a little bit better. Right Close out dividends. The reason I put an asterisk there is because we may not have dividends. If we don't have dividends and we didn't declare them, there will be nothing there to close out. So you give it a try. I'm gonna show you a scenario here. After the accounts have been adjusted as of December 31, the end of the year, the following balances are taken from the ledger of Wilmington Consulting. You can see we've got all kinds of balances right there. I want you to journalize the closing entries, four of them, for that information. So I will provide you with a journal template and you can write it out by hand uh, and then hopefully you can come up with the correct answer. We'll pause the video right now, let you do that. And then we'll come back and show you the correct answer. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to go through that. You've made some closing entries. Here's what you should have come up with. Entry number one, again, we're closing out the revenue accounts. Entry number two, we're closing out the expense accounts. And entry number three, we're closing out the income summary. And then finally, we are closing out the dividends. We have one more video. In the chapter, we're going to take a look at the post-closing trial balance, our final trial balance. I promise you we only have three of them. And so we get done with the trial balance routine after we do the post-closing trial balance. We'll be, getting, uh, we'll be ready to start a new accounting cycle the following month. All right, if you have any questions about closing entries, how to make them, what's going on with all of that, I'd be happy to help. Feel free to reach out anytime. Until then... Take care, everybody.